Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. This episode is brought to you by Latin Excellence. Visit latinexcellence.com. That's latinx, C-E-L-L-E-N-C-E.com or latinxmovement.com to learn more and shop our merchandise. You are excellence. Hello and welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. My name is Lewis and I'm your host. Thank you for tuning in. Tax season is upon us. Most of us are getting a tax refund. And I want to talk to you about the top six money moves for that money. What are the top things that you should consider doing with this money? You want to be purposeful with your money. You want to be uh, you want to have some intent behind it, right? So let's dig in. Now, one thing I want to mention is that these are the top six things that I recommend. However, you don't only need to do one of them. Uh, you can do many of them depending on the size of your refund and your goals. And also they're not necessarily in order because each situation is different. And depending on where you are, what your goals are, et cetera, uh, one might make sense over the other. So let's dive in. The first thing is emergency savings. I am a big fan of having money set aside for a rainy day, right? So you can call it a rainy day fund, emergency savings fund, however you want to call it. Make sure that you always have some money set aside to cover a certain period of time if you find yourself having no or lower income than usual. As you have noticed with the pandemic, a lot of people found themselves in that situation where they're out of work or making less money than they were accustomed to. And that created a big problem. So having an emergency fund is crucial. So if you don't have one or if it's not enough and you're getting a tax refund, I would recommend looking into this uh, to add or start your emergency savings because any small little thing can derail your budget, right? A lot of people happen to live paycheck to paycheck and something unexpected like a car repair could just throw you completely off where now you find yourself having to borrow credit cards or or borrow from people or tap into retirement accounts like 401ks. And then it becomes harder to just dig yourself out of the hole, right? Because now you have to take money that you were used to paying your bills to then pay back whatever debt you uh, incurred as a result, you know? So emergency savings, big. Speaking of savings too, it could also be adding to your savings for other savings buckets or creating savings buckets for things that are gonna be expenses in the future. One of them, for example, could be a down payment for a home. So if you're planning on buying a house, maybe in one to two years, you can add, your refund to that fund to help beef that up so that you have more money for your down payment, closing costs, maybe moving expenses, or maybe furnishings, right? Or just to have it, again, for emergency purposes in case something happens with the house eventually, right? Also, um, could be another big purchase, like a down payment to a car. You probably, um, maybe you were leasing right now and you're expecting to buy out your car or you're going to give the car back and buy something new. You're going to need some money to put down to pay for the taxes and so on. You can create or add to an existing savings bucket, any goal like that. So think about that in terms of boosting or starting rainy day fund or adding to existing savings buckets. Number two is paying off high interest debt. This is a great time for you to take a huge chunk of money and throw it down on something that you're paying double digits interest rates on like credit cards or personal loans as well. You know, So this can help you accelerate that debt payoff strategy by just sending a big amount of money like your refund into something like that. Now, uh, we are in a special situation right now, if you're listening in the year 2022, where as of the recording of this podcast, the student loans deferment for federal student loans is still in effect at 0% rate. And as of now, it expires in May. Now, this is another great opportunity. If you are having your student loan repayment as a priority, this could be another good strategy. Thinking about it this way, right now, your interest rate is 0% on your student loans. If you get a nice chunk of money back, like a tax refund, you can send it 
to that student loan before the interest rate goes back up to what it was. And so that way, when it goes back up to what it was, the interest rate is then going to be based on the new principal balance. So this could be a great way to accelerate your student loan repayment strategy. So something else to consider. Uh, or if you have like a 0% APR credit card that you got, you can help accelerate that payoff so that you can pay it all off before the 0% APR expires. You know, so it's one way of looking at the student loans that way as well. Number three is life insurance. This is uh, something that a lot of people don't necessarily like to think about, and that's understandable. But I want you to think of what would happen if, unfortunately, you were to pass in terms of who depends on you for income? Do you have young children that depend for you for, you for income? Do you have uh, a loved one that you help support? Do you have a partner, spouse, and so on that would be in a lot of trouble if your income all of a sudden disappeared, right? Uh, a mortgage maybe that they wouldn't be able to afford or perhaps um, send kids to college, you know, any legacy planning of that sort. Take a look at that, you know, just consider how would your loved ones be impacted aside from the, obviously the emotional toll it'll take. How would they be impacted financially if you were no longer around? Do you have enough assets to leave them so that they can, uh, continue with something that you wanted to happen, like pay for your kid's college or continue to stay in the house that you bought together, things of that sort. If the answer scares you and you don't have life insurance, then consider doing that, right? Get a quote. Uh, you don't have to get any fancy product. You can get a, a regular, um, the, the most basic type of insurance out there is called term and you just buy it for a certain term amount. So it could be like a 20 year policy, a 30 year policy to cover a crucial time that you might be interested in covering, like uh, making sure kids are already adults and so on, right? So think about it that way. Uh, you might be able to just get something in place now. And even if it wasn't part of your existing budget, you could just grab it and maybe pay it in full or uh, at least have enough money to continue to be able to pay for it using your tax refund, right? So you may have insurance that's group life from your employer, but take a look because that may not be enough. A lot of the times I've seen some employers where it's either a fixed amount or it's a multiple of salary. So it could be like, hey, uh, you know, if you die, this group term policy covers three times salary. You know, if you make $75,000 a year times three, that may not be enough coverage, right? So you might still need to buy another policy aside from what you're provided by your employer. So this might be a great time that you get in this um, this chunk of money coming in via tax refund to evaluate that, you know, make sure that you, you're covering yourself um, and also your loved ones. So this could be a good opportunity. Number four is kickstarting a holiday fund. Right now it's February. Um, maybe the holidays are still fresh in your mind, especially if you charged all of those gifts that you bought and now you have credit card debt, right? This could be a good opportunity for you to get off of that cycle. Um, I remember I was in that myself a while back when I was younger, where uh, let's say like Christmas came around and I would buy gifts and I would buy them on credit because I actually did not have enough money to afford them, but I still bought them anyway. And then it was just a cycle, right? Uh, charge of the credit cards, tax refund came, send it to the credit cards. And then Christmas came around again, charge of the credit card, you know, so it just a never ending cycle until you make it. So, so this could be a great opportunity for you to, Going back to those savings bucket I talked about at the beginning, create a bucket for your holiday spending and set it aside now. You know, think about all the people that you buy gifts for, how much you plan on spending more or less on each. Set that money aside now. Put it on the savings account um, in a in a sub account, basically, where it's earmarked for that. So that way, when November or so comes, all that money is already there. You no longer need to dip into your credit card for it. And now you break off that cycle. That's a great opportunity here uh, to have this refund and start that. So that way uh, you have the peace of mind and also you're setting yourself up for success because you're no longer needing to go into debt to buy any gifts. All right, so great strategy there. Number five is charity. Uh, a lot of us are charitable. A lot of us are very fortunate and we want to 
give back as a result of that. So this could be a great opportunity as well for you to take some money and give to a cause as near and dear to your heart, you know, or help somebody out that, you know, needs it. Um, it will be a great opportunity. This is, um, you know, just something that a lot of people get a, a real benefit out of, you know, just from like their own values, you know, so if it doesn't fit into your monthly budget and now you're getting a refund, you could take a bit of that and, and help somebody else out. And, you know, just do something that would really make you feel good as well. Right. And I left number six for last because it has several subsections and that is investing. Investing. If you are not investing right now, consider starting investing soon. You know, the money in your bank account does not accumulate much interest. And over time, it actually loses its purchasing power. <laughs> because, uh, you know, you're saying that makes me feel like I'm back in school when I was studying economics in college, but ultimately inflation, right? Prices go up as you see all the time. So the money in the bank account just doesn't keep up with that. So I always recommend having your savings, right? For your emergencies and, and several savings buckets. Like if you're saving money for down payment and so forth, but anything over that, that you could save, especially if it's a long-term goal, you should, really consider investing because you want ultimately to have a rate of return that's going to be higher than what inflation is over time, right? Because you want your money to work for you. So investing, what are some of the vehicles that you can look into? One of them could be um, a Roth IRA if you qualify under the income guidelines, uh, or even if you don't, right? There's a, another strategy called a backdoor Roth IRA, but without getting too technical, a Roth IRA is something where you can put money into. And right now it's a good opportunity because the tax deadline is also the deadline to contribute for the prior year. So this year, April 18th, 2022 is a deadline to contribute for an IRA for tax year 2021, which is great opportunity uh, that exists right now. So in the Roth, you put after tax dollars into it. Uh, currently, the limits are $6,000 a year with a $1,000 contribution, uh, the catch-up contribution for ages 50 and above. So if you're age 50 or above, you can do 7000 But ultimately, you put after-tax dollars into this vehicle. And then eventually, if you follow a couple of rules, you have to wait until age 59 and a half and have it for um, at least five years. You can then have all that money tax-free. So it'll be a great boost to your retirement. So when you are um, able to start drawing from it, you're going to be happy that's all tax-free. <laughs> so Roth IRA is one great option to consider. Number two, if, if you're already doing um, your retirement accounts all set, you can put money in a brokerage account. And that's very easily open online and start investing, whether it's in mutual funds or individual stocks, depending on whatever your goals are and your risk tolerance. Uh, so that's something where you definitely would want to work with a financial planner on. Uh, but ultimately, the, the name of the game is putting your dollars to work for you, right? Because you work very hard for them. So uh, it's time for them to work for you as well. Number three is cryptocurrencies. You know, you, you probably heard about uh, Bitcoin out there and, and all the, the rest of them. Bitcoin is certainly the major one. Ethereum is a close second and, and then everything else. Um, this might be a good opportunity if you have not uh, been into the crypto game and you want to. Right, you're curious about it, and it fits into your overall portfolio. It might be an opportunity then to take some of your refund and maybe, uh, you know, get your toes wet and, and start an account where you buy some crypto as well. If if it fits in your overall strategy, in terms of your risk tolerance and your goals, so great opportunity here as well using the, some of the tax refund to do that. And another thing where you can invest, where people a lot of times don't necessarily see it as an investment. But if you don't, I want to reframe your mind around it, is investing in yourself. And there are many ways that you can do that. One is, for example, uh, something as simple as buying a self-improvement book. Um, also attending a seminar. Um, anything that is going to help you become a better version of you, because ultimately, that's what's going to give you the highest return on your investment. The better you are positioned, and that could be many things, right? That could be your emotional, uh, mental health, right? So that could mean, hey, listen, uh, talking to somebody, you know, if you're going through some stuff, um, 
That may mean that, right? It may mean going to a seminar. It may mean hiring a coach. This may also mean um, starting a business that you've been thinking about for a while, maybe a side hustle, and you need some money to get it started to form the corporation or whatever it might be, right? This might give you the seed money that you needed to finally get out there and say, you know what, now I'm getting this refund. I am going to hire that person to build that website for my side hustle. You know, like think about it this way. This is an investment in yourself that, you know, it's not a traditional investment in the traditional sense of the word, but it's probably going to give you the highest rate of return because uh, it's you, you know, and and you're the one that's going to make everything else happen. So think about it that way. It could be enrolling in a gym. You know, things are opening back up. If you feel more comfortable being out there now, it might mean going to the gym, getting uh, physically better, right? It could be hiring a fitness coach or, or buying a program of some sort, right? It could be just subscribing to an app that gives you exercises every day. Um, there's several variations of it. And another one that I like to talk about too, this is a, uh, one that you may find fun, find fun is a vacation or a spa day or, or massage. I mean, something like that. I mean, you are investing in your rejuvenation, you know, giving yourself a recharge of your batteries. A lot of us work very hard. You probably do as well, right? And the pandemic has been here. Maybe you haven't gone out for a long time. You haven't had a vacation in a while. You haven't had a break. Now you're getting a tax refund. Things are opening back up. Seems like COVID numbers are going down and, and things are getting better. It might be that opportunity to say, you know what? Let me take this money and, and go for a long weekend or let's go away for a week and rejuvenate. Just reinvest in, in your energy, reinvest in yourself. You know, So that's another way of looking at it. Um, I know it's not traditional, right? Especially uh, a lot of people have a misconception that financial planners are always like, everything's about saving the most money all the time. Uh, and that's not necessarily the case, right? So I'm a believer in this too. It's like, you need to rejuvenate. You need to invest in yourself. So think about it that way. Uh, this is all a part of a, a larger picture when you think about it as investing in yourself because there is a rate of return when you do that. Uh, there's a rate of a rate of investment, right? A return on your investment when you invest in yourself. And it's not necessarily something you can put into a percentage or dollar wise, but the better you are, the better position you're in, the better you feel, the happier you'll be. And then the more productive you'll be. And then the better you'll work, maybe more ideas will come that would help you just improve your life overall, right? So plenty of benefits out there. Now, I did an episode, is episode 99, that talks about why I don't want a huge tax refund and neither should you. But if you are in a situation where you are getting a refund, these are the top six money moves for your tax refund. However, I encourage you to listen to episode 99 because then it talks about why having a tax refund isn't always the best idea, having a huge one rather, uh, because then you can implement some of these things during the year as opposed to waiting to get in the bin chuck of money. So highly recommend you listen to episode 99 as well. Thank you all for tuning in. I always love to hear from you. So if you're going to implement any one of these or already doing them, I'd love to hear one of the six money moves that you're going to make uh, or already started and let me know how it goes. Louise at onmywaytowealth.com. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at louise at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.